Kelly, uh, get us up to date. We had a lot of developments just within the last hour. Borders being closed. We just were announcing what the mayor is now doing in Moscow. What are you seeing? That's right. So we're hearing that many of the governors in the surrounding regions south and southwest of Moscow are now advising people to stay home. They're closing roads in some cases, restricting travel. Uh, of course, you mentioned the mayor of Moscow saying that uh, there is a special uh, anti-terrorism operation declared in Moscow and urging people to stay home, essentially saying uh, the day is work day is canceled on Monday, uh, not just today, but through Monday, he said the situation is difficult, but in order to minimize risks. This is something that they needed to do. Uh, the last known uh, or believed position of these Wagner forces is about 250 miles south of Moscow along this main road, the M4, which connects Rostov-on-Don down in the south, uh, close to the Ukrainian border, to Moscow. Uh, a couple of hours ago, the governor of the province, uh, Lipetsk, uh, announced that Wagner forces were in the area and told people uh, to stay home. Now, you, you hinted as to, you gave a little bit of a, a briefing of how this all developed, and it's really moved very quickly over the past 24 hours. There was this extraordinary message, this all out attack on the Russian military by Wagner leader uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin about 12, 14 hours ago, in which he said that, the, that Russia did not invade Ukraine because Ukraine was going to attack Russia. Uh, Russia invaded Ukraine so the top military commanders could enrich themselves with medals and and uh, with other things uh, and that this is really a corrupt enterprise essentially attacking uh, the main uh, justification for war that President Putin uh, has been talking about now for uh, well since the war began after that happened Prigozhin claims there was an attack on his forces Moscow says uh, they did not attack Prigozhin's forces and then early Early in the morning, you had the Wagner group claiming and Prigozhin claiming that they had taken control of this city, Rostov-on-Don, a city of about a million people just across the border from Ukraine on Russian territory, and that they had also taken over a key military base, the, the headquarters for the Southern Command, the place where the Ukrainian war, the war against Ukraine has been prosecuted since the beginning and also a major military uh, logistics hub. So this is a key, key place, strategic position for Russia in its war uh, against Ukraine. Now, uh, it's difficult to verify and um, confirm a lot of this information. A lot of this is coming from uh, Wagner-affiliated uh, social media channels. But we've seen the video, Richard, of uh, Wagner forces in uh, Rostov-on-Don. There are tanks on the streets. There are soldiers sort of milling about. It doesn't appear as though there's any sort of fighting happening uh, there. Um, and then up the road, about 250, 300 miles up the road, there are reports of uh, Wagner forces making headway and also unconfirmed reports of fighting. And quite frankly, we simply don't know any more about that, whether that is some sort of, whether there is any fighting between Russian forces and Wagner forces or, or, uh, or, or what the explanation for those reports could be. So we're, we're trying to track that down. You mentioned President Putin. He's come out very strongly, a five-minute address to the nation, calling this a stab in the back to the Russian people and promising decisive action. But the big question now, Richard, what is Prigozhin's endgame? And we simply don't know right now. Richard.